Not your average stability shoe, the Hoka Arahi 7 delivers the same great ride you've come to know and expect from the Arahi line with their J-Frame technology. However, there are a few updates to the upper this year, so let's take a deep dive into the Arahi 7. Let's get to it. Well, hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Steven. I wanna let you know that Hoka did send the Arahi 7s to me to review. They're not gonna see this footage ahead of time. They're not gonna proof it. Tell me what to say. I'm gonna say the truth, just like always. Well, as always, we're gonna start off with the stats of the Arahi 7. First off, it is a stability shoe like we talked about in the opener there. There is a little flexibility to it and a little twist, but it is also fairly rigid. And some of that rigidity is due to that J frame, which we will talk about in just a moment. As for the stack height of the Arahi, 7. The men's came in at 37 millimeters in the rear, 32 millimeters in the front for a five millimeter drop. And for a woman's shoe, it came in at 34 millimeters in the rear, 29 millimeters in the front for that same five millimeter drop. As for the weight, my men's size 11 weighed in at 10.3 ounces or 293 grams. That's not bad. It is a little bit lighter than the Puma Forever Run Nitro, another stability shoe that I have reviewed here on the channel. And the fit is true to size for Hoka's size 11 fit my foot just like all other Hoka's do. And I should note that the Arahi 7 is made from vegan materials, and it's also been given the seal of acceptance from the American Podiatric Medical Association for a shoe that benefits foot health. Hey, before we get into the upper on the Arahi 7, do me a favor, scroll down, click that thumbs up button. It really does help out a lot. I would appreciate it. And maybe consider clicking the subscribe button as well. That would be really cool. The upper of the Arahi 7 is where the majority of the changes took place this year. And the first is to the material of the upper. It is now a flat knit upper that has been zonally engineered for breathability in key areas of the shoe. You can see kind of some cutouts here uh, or zones and in the front as well for that breathability. And it's also supposed to help provide a better midfoot lockdown. I gotta say the upper does feel pretty comfortable on the foot after more than 50 miles of testing. And it does appear that it's gonna be very durable. As for that claimed breathability, take a look at the tissue test. You can see when I flip that hair dryer on low, the tissue did have some movement to it, but really not much at all. And when I switched the hair dryer to high, the tissue did come up just a little bit more, but I certainly would not classify this as a, a very breathable shoe. Don't get me wrong, the Arahi 7 does breathe. I can feel it a little bit when running, but it's definitely not as breathable as say the Mach X or even the Puma Forever Run Nitro. The toe box of the Arahi 7 is pretty typical for Hoka. It's, you know, provides enough room for my average to narrow size foot. Just for reference, you can take a look at my foot measurements on the screen. And so far, I have not had any issues of hot spots or rubbing on either my big toe or my pinky toe. There's been just enough room. Moving on up the shoe to the medial arch, the midfoot of the shoe, I do feel that it might just be ever so slightly more narrow than say the Clifton 9. Uh, or even the Mach X, for instance. But I am feeling the uh, medial arch just a little bit more than in other Hoka's. Now, some of that could be due to the stability features of the shoe as, as it is designed to help those that may over pronate a little bit. So there is gonna be a little more support in that area. The tongue on the Arahi 7 is nicely padded. That's one of the improvements over the Arahi 6. And it is semi-gusseted on both sides of the shoe to keep that tongue from kind of migrating around on your foot. The lacing system is perfectly fine. It's Hoka's lay flat laces. They do what they're supposed to do. They stay tied, they don't come untied. It's really pretty nice. And with that padded tongue, I have not had any issues of discomfort over the top of my foot. The heel collar in the back is nicely padded and offers a good level of comfort and a good lockdown. I wouldn't say it's overly plush, but it does have a good level of protection there. And you can definitely see the heel pull tab or the heel flare at the back of the shoe just a little bit. And that heel counter definitely has some flexibility to it at the top. Overall, this has been a very comfortable upper while not feeling overly plush and still providing a great lockdown, even when using it on some light trails. The midsole of the Arahi 7 here is where that stability magic happens. It is made from Hoka's compression molded EVA or CM EVA foam. It's very durable. It's a foam that Hoka has been using for many years in a lot of their shoes, and it does a good job. I gotta say though that the midsole does feel maybe a bit more firm than I was expecting. Um, you know, there is still some cushion underfoot, but it is definitely more firm and it's not that Hoka Kush that, you know, we've kind of all come to expect. So the midsole of the Arahi 7 does have Hoka's patented J-Frame technology, which if you pay very close attention, you can see there is actually a seam right here that goes all the way around the shoe up to the forefoot. And if you look at the bottom of the shoe, these are kind of dirty, so I'll put some on the screen if you in here in just a minute. But you can see right about here on the lateral side of the shoe, right about the midfoot, that's where the J starts and it curves all the way around 
and comes up to the forefoot right up here. You can see that's where that separate piece of foam is. And it's a more dense piece of that CMEVA foam to provide more support uh, to your foot as it's landing and making contact with the ground to help you with that overpronation. And what I mean by help you with that overpronation is basically it's designed to combat excessive overpronation. So if your foot tends to land on the outside and come in sharply, that's overpronating. So it's designed to help reduce that a little bit. When running, I can definitely feel the stability features in the shoe as my foot strikes the ground and kind of wants to roll inward a little bit. It's not excessive in the stability area, but I can definitely feel it. Now, normally I do wear neutral shoes, but for someone like me that tends to like a neutral shoe, it still feels very comfortable and it's not overly aggressive. As far as the overall ride of the Arahi 7, it fits right in that daily trainer status for me. It's uh, definitely a little more firm than I was expecting. And I gotta say, it's a little similar to the Puma Forever on Nitro here. However, I do think this might feel a little bit more responsive. The Arahi 7 is definitely not a shoe that I would choose to go do speed work in because it does lack that responsiveness, but it does have that cushion in the midsole, even though it's a little more firm, to protect you over those long daily miles. And it even works really well on the treadmill. The outsole of the Arahi 7 is Hoka's Zonal Durabrasion Rubber. You can see these little zones that they have the rubber on. And it's really in all the right places. As a shoe designed for someone that overpronates with those stability features, it does have more rubber on the outside lateral portion of the shoe, which is generally where that foot would contact first and then roll inward. So it should help increase the longevity of the outsole. And the grip has been really quite good on paved surfaces. It feels really nice and confidence inspiring. And even on light trails, it's worked really well for me. Really though, there's not a lot to say about the outsole. It does its job, it does it well, it gives you good grip. And I think it's gonna last quite a while because these zonal pods are pretty thick. There's a decent amount of rubber there. So the Arahi 7 retails for 145 US dollars, which is the same price as the Hoka Clifton 9. However, it is five bucks cheaper than the Puma Forever Run Nitro that we talked about just a moment ago. And I guess I gotta say, that's probably about where I was expecting this shoe to be because it seems like nowadays, $145 is now the new 120. Well, the bottom line of the Arahi 7 is it is a great shoe for daily training and for those that tend to need a little bit of stability because they overpronate. It's not a shoe that's gonna be overly fun to run in or impress you, but it does a great job of providing a little stability and it does it really well. So if you were in the market for a stability shoe to log those daily miles, then definitely give the Arahi 7 a look. Now I know the Arahi line is very popular. They're really good sellers for Hoka. So let me know what you think of the Arahi he said below in the comments. I'm sure everybody would really appreciate hearing your thoughts as well. So I did talk about the Puma Forever Run Nitro a couple of times in this video, as it is another stability shoe that I have reviewed, and it is somewhat similar. So go ahead and take a look at that review on your screen. I'll see you over there. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all.